morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you all. Today we'll consider what Easter means to us Christians. And uh, we'll begin by singing the first hymn. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Be at rest once more, O my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. That I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will sacrifice a thank offering to you. Praise the Lord. Well, children, good morning once again. So, today I want to share with you another one of the beautiful pictures of Easter. Now, Think of that butterfly. Isn't that a beautiful thing to think of, a butterfly? But you know, a butterfly stands out kind of not so pretty. Just as a little caterpillar. And of course, the caterpillar eats and eats and eats until it gets fat and fluffy. And then it spins a cocoon or chrysalis around itself and then it looks dead. Looks like that's it, nothing more. 
until all of a sudden, one day, it eats its way out of the chrysalis and out comes this beautiful butterfly that goes flying away. So can you see how that reminds us of Jesus? We think of how they, on, on Good Friday, Jesus died for your sins and mine and everybody else's. And after he died, they put him in the tomb. And for all practical purposes, they looked at that body there, uh, that they lay in the tomb, and they figured, that's it. He's done. That's it. He's dead. But all of a sudden, on the third day, he wasn't in that grave anymore. He wasn't in the tomb. He was alive again and showed himself alive. And so with that, he proved that he really did die for our sins. And he proves that he's God. And he came out as that beautiful glorified butterfly, so to speak. So you, anytime you see a butterfly, just think of how Jesus rose from the dead for us. Well, with that, I'll give you a couple of these. Look at that. You welcome. Peter leads us to want to live for our future in heaven because Jesus Christ gave him the ultimate sacrifice to have us with him forever in heaven, his own lifeblood for us. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of God. The Emmaus disciples personally learned that Jesus had risen from the dead. And another valuable lesson that they learned is the power of God's word. Uh, here now the gospel lesson for today recorded in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24 beginning with the 13th verse. Please rise for the words and works of the Lord Jesus. Now that same day, which was that first Easter day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of the women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, 
he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Troubled and afraid, oh, I'm sorry. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they re recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God. We pray, O risen Lord, you came to your disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And having heard the word of God, let us confess our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the next hymn.
recorded in Acts chapter 2, beginning with the first half of 14 and then on with 22. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, have put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because he will not abandon me to the realm of the dead you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. This is the word of God. Dear fellow Christians, the butterfly is most certainly a wonderful picture of Easter. But before we go into too much more of that, we'd also think of that worm, that caterpillar, for a moment. And I turn your attention back to Psalm 22, where Jesus used the first words of Psalm 22 from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is in that same psalm that there were so many references to the scriptures, to the Old Testament scriptures that pointed ahead to the Messiah on the cross, that I also used this a few years ago, Psalm 22, as the basis for all of the sermons during the Lent and midweek services. And uh, it was there that the Messiah also said, I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. Paul described that caterpillar of a man, Jesus, to the Philippians. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. But Jesus emerged from the tomb, not only as a man, but also as God, with all his power and might. So Paul went on, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. All about that beautiful butterfly, Jesus arose from the dead. And 40 days later, he ascended into heaven and we're told he has gone to prepare a place for us. Because Jesus died and rose, you and I have something to sing about. But do we? Oh, I know we sing out with lots of joy on Easter Sunday morning. What a wondrous time. But how about thereafter? You know, the early Christians decided that each Sunday was supposed to be another day of Easter, each and every week. Time to rejoice in the resurrection. Do we joyfully sing out each and every day of the year, throughout the year? 
We have so many trials and temptations here in this earthly life that try to steal some of that joy of the risen Savior away from us. That's why it's so important for us to remember what Easter means to a Christian. And that's what we're going to consider today. Easter means more than just having brain knowledge concerning the death of Jesus for our sins and the resurrection again from, uh, to life again. No, it's more than that. Consider how Easter also gives us as Christians Easter confidence. If you recall, when I started the message last Sunday, uh, the, the reason I chose the second half of Peter's Pentecost sermon last Sunday was because we were going to have two baptisms and the confirmation. And it was a wonderful time since Peter specifically mentioned baptism in the second half of this sermon. It was a good time for us to take that part. Well, today we're going backwards and hearing the first part of that message, the first sermon recorded in the Bible after the resurrection concerning something that Jesus' disciples uh, preached. So, here Peter shows absolutely no hesitancy, no uncertainty whatsoever. Unlike the disciples just 50 days earlier, when they were hidden in that room and with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, for fear that they were all going to die, now Peter boldly spoke up in front of all of them. In fact, in front of the crowds that were some of the same crowds that had yelled, crucify him, crucify him. But Peter wasn't quaking in his sandals, no. He calmly spoke to the crowd and told them point blank with you with the help of wicked men put to death this man by nailing him to the cross yes you did it but you didn't know what you were doing and you what you didn't also know was that this was all part of god's plan and foreknowledge for centuries earlier yes in fact from eternity god chose his own son to do this for us. And so as part of God's plan, God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Peter now had confidence in proclaiming that he was risen from the dead. Not only was he himself an eyewitness but he now knew that the Bible had all of this in mind with all of the scriptures of the Old Testament already. Along with the other disciples, Peter had learned much of this just since the day of resurrection. Early on Easter morning when Peter and John uh, ran to the tomb and inspected the empty tomb, John reports for us they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Old Testament is filled with prophecies concerning Jesus' death and resurrection. Not just his death, but his resurrection too. And yet they didn't understand that. Once more, Jesus himself had told them many times before that this is exactly what was going to happen. And yet they still did not understand until he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. Now Peter knew what he was talking about. And he explained to his fellow Jews Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet. And he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah. That he was not abandoned to the, to the realm of the dead. 
nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. He was pointing to a passage that David wrote in <coughs> Psalm 16 about his descendant, but also his Lord and Savior at one and the same time. Obviously, David couldn't have been speaking about himself, Peter says, because if he were talking about this of himself, well then, David wouldn't have decayed in the tomb, his body. But instead, David was buried. In fact, you can go to Jerusalem even today and look at David's tomb. We didn't when we were there three years ago, but nonetheless, we could have. But you see, that isn't the point, is it? He wasn't talking about himself when he said that his body would not see decay. He had to be speaking of another. He was speaking about his, his own Savior. And so it's for that. On the third day, he rose again from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. We learned that from our uh, Nicene Creed, but it's also there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Friends in Christ, you know, by the fact that we live in the sinful world, there are many biblical scholars around that try to insist that all of this is just nonsense. They try to debunk all of scripture and say, uh, well, you can believe it if you want to, but you're foolish if you do. Let them talk that way if they wish. The fact is, is that we know what we're speaking of because it's just as Jesus prayed in the garden, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. The fact is, is that God's word is the truth that you and I can rely on, can believe in, can take firmly and have confidence that Jesus not only died for the sins of all, but rose again from the dead. And so we hear uh, him boldly proclaim with Peter and David, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. When troubles of life come upon you or me, they don't need to shake us to pieces. Because God has promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And Jesus himself had said as he was about to ascend into heaven, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Easter also gives us confidence because of what Jesus has done. Let's consider an example or two. Suppose a child is being picked on on a regular basis. That hurts. And anybody that gets picked on, well, don't you start to wonder if anyone cares at all? Well, Jesus cares. That's fact. He redeemed us, and he endured the worst in suffering and dying for us to make us children of God that can face anything with his help. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Or what if you or I carry a heavy burden of guilt over some terrible sin that we've committed. How wonderful it is to hear the words of comfort, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us, cleanses us from all sin. That's fact that we can rely on. Or maybe some of us might start thinking that a certain sickness or an accident or some other trouble that's come upon us is punishment that God is inflicting on us for some sin that we've done. What a relief to hear him say he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. God has declared us not guilty because he proclaimed his own son on the cross 
guilty of your sins and mine and everyone else's. Completely guilty. He died so that you and I live. He carried the guilt so that you and I don't have to. He did it all for us already. So we as Christians can then look with confidence every single day, knowing God is with us. Also having Easter hope. You know, people say, I hope I get a good grade. I hope we have a good vacation. I hope it'll be good weather. But really all they're saying is, I wish, I wish. There's no certainty in that, is there? Well, Christian hope is not like that. Christian hope is sure hope, sure confidence. Peter spoke of this in his epistle. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never spoil, perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. With Jesus, we have a living hope, a sure hope, because we have a living, certain, risen Savior. He's promised to be with us throughout life. And he's also told us that he's preparing a place for us in heaven. And that tells us also how we'll get there. Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when we have Christian hope, when a Christian says, I hope to get to heaven, it's not wishing on a star. It's really meaning, because of Jesus, my sure hope is in my heavenly hope with him. So many people of our world have a sense of hopelessness and despair. That's because they play, place all their hopes in their good vacation or their nice house or their beautiful car or their good government. And so then they don't realize that those things are all the things about which Jesus spoke when he said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, given to you as well from God. Since we Christians know that every good and perfect gift is, comes down from above, coming from the heavenly light, Father of the heavenly lights, we know that that's where we're going to get help from, that's how we're going to live, and move and have our being. Our sure hope for this life and for the one to come is with the Lord. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. The hope of which David and Peter spoke here is the same one. My body also will rest in hope, or as the evangelical heritage version translates it, even my flesh will dwell securely, will live securely. We live in safety and security in the same sure hope that Jesus had of rising from the dead. That was certain. God was taking, is going to take care of us the same as that he certainly took care of him. So we have a sure future in the Lord until the Lord takes us to be with him forever in heaven. That's why I also read at a funeral or a committal about uh, our fellow Christians and what we have to look forward to. In the wonderful words of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 
Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. That's because we do have hope in Jesus. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in him. That's Christian hope. That's a sure hope. That certainly takes away all of our sorrow. There's a Christian cartoon that was out quite a while back that showed a bunch of caterpillars mournfully carrying a chrysalis on their backs. But the chrysalis was empty and there was this wonderful, beautiful butterfly flying above overhead. You and I can look to the skies and to know the day is coming when we'll be forever with the Lord. That's the certain hope we have in Christ. Easter means confidence. Easter means a sure hope. And that also brings Easter joy. David could joyfully look ahead to the day, to the day of his own resurrection from the dead due to the fact that he knew that his Lord and Savior was, who was also a descendant of his, was also going to rise from the dead. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices, he says. To us Christians, Easter means joy. The devil constantly tries to get us to look at all the evils in this world and to think there's no hope. There's no joy that we can have because after all, everything is failing. It's all going bad. No matter what it is, it might be in our government, it might be in the, the whole world, it might be in our own individual lives. But the devil will try everything he can to make us think that it's all going to go for naught. And then we read those wonderful words of Romans chapter 8, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's God's promise. But you know, even that promise isn't as great as the one that comes later on at that end of that chapter. I bet you love it just as much as I do. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Easter triumph, Easter joy. What we have in our risen Savior is just that. Yes, we can join in saying with David and Peter and Jesus, you will fill me with joy in your presence. God gives us the fullness of joy. We, we, who should have been punished for our own sins, but our Savior was punished in our place, and so we are forgiven in Christ. We, who should have had nothing to look forward to but hell, but instead we have heaven, a sure hope of heaven due to our Savior. In other words, confidence in life, hope for eternity, and joy in our hearts now and eternally. That's what Easter means to a Christian, to all of us as Christians. And so let us sing our hallelujahs and rejoice in our risen Savior, because we know the best is yet to come. And all of God's people confidently said, Amen.
and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the next hymn. rescue those who would be lost eternally, including us, to give us eternal life through believing in him. Lift our eyes heavenward to see him who lives to intercede for us, to make sure our prayers are heard and answered. Grant us confidence in the greatness of his power. Keep before us the vision of all of us believers in Christ, standing one day before your throne and singing the song of victory. Use our words and our lives as your tools to bring the good news of Jesus to many others around us. In this way, they will share in the peace of mind and conscience that we have through your forgiving us. Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of salvation. With happy hearts, we come to you and say, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. So shall it be. And we further pray, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude now with the final hymn. today and then I forgot to put it in the bulletin <laughs> and as it turns out Bethany's not feeling well today so Lori's winding up uh, serving anyway so. anyway uh, looking ahead to some of the things uh, uh, May 13th uh, the Christus ladies will be meeting again you're certainly welcome to join them for that and uh, men uh, keep this and kids keep this in mind you know May 14th is Mother's Day just letting you know. I want you to know too that um, I have talked with Pastor Paul Schuchman. He is actually um, one of our district mission board uh, members. And uh, I have wanted to uh, have a service with him for a couple of years now, but it never worked out. Well, now it does. Right on Ascension Day, it's going to work out, uh, God willing, for Paul to come here. And so we're planning Mission Festival for that day. And uh, in case you didn't know it, our synod uh, in convention last year, um, no, two years ago, decided that starting this year, we were going to aim for a hundred new missions in 10 years. And so uh, we'll, have, we'll be hearing more about that. Anyway, and uh, you all are interested in knowing May 25th is Assignment Day at the seminary. And in case you don't know it, by the way, 
you can actually get online and watch that service at 10 o'clock that morning live. So, um, and there's also a Wells Night uh, with the Brewers again. Uh, that's on July 7th. Uh, oh, I forgot one other. There we go. So, uh, today, adopt the highway, uh, our stretch of Highway 89. So hopefully some of you can help with that. Um, and uh, choir will meet again on Saturday at 11. Uh, and next Sunday, we're having another confirmation day. This time, our three young people that will be confirmed. Uh, so uh, the Jacobs and the Nelsons will uh, take care of the luncheon that day for us. Uh, and uh, there's a church leadership meeting going on uh, at St. Paul's in Lake Mills next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock. And this is not just for church councilman and pastor. This is for any and all men and women who see themselves as leaders in the congregation. Uh, and and uh, by the way, the governor wanted us all to have this meeting concerning mental health, considering uh, all of the ramifications of COVID. So that's how this started, but uh, they're promoting it uh, greatly for us all. So if you can, come to it. Anyway, with that, oh, these Easter lilies look beautiful this Sunday yet, but I don't think they're going to make it till next Sunday. So if you uh, did buy some, um, Please help yourself today and take them home with you. And thank you very much for sharing them with us. That's a wonderful thing. So, so with that, I believe that's all the announcements except to say, to, just to make sure that, you know, even though Blake's not here today, uh, Bryce is, there's the food, you make the fellowship. <laughs> oh, you are here, okay. <laughs>